Hello house lovers, welcome to the wonderful Bonacord house and let us go inside to continue the adventure of our renovation story. And of course, last week I left you with a Chuck's cliffhanger. Let's go and see who fell off the cliff. Yes, house lovers who did shoot JR, does Joan Collins survive the massacre at the Moldovan royal wedding and did the Chucks manage to strip 150 years worth of wallpaper and paint? Here's the big reveal. Hello, house lovers. It is a very wet and chilly morning here in sunny Melbourne, and I have come to check out on our Chucks experiment to see if that wet Chucks is still sticking to the wall and if it has miraculously stripped off 150 years worth of paint and wallpaper. I promise I haven't had a look yet, so let's go and see. Here we go. There's the bucket. <gasps> Ta-da! It is still sticking. Okay, let me get a scraper and see if it's done anything. And of course, I have decided to wear white and blue velvets to strip this wall this morning, which is somewhat foolish of me, but never mind. Okay, let's see if this has worked. Because if it has, house lovers, I spent hundreds of dollars on each of those tubs of stripper, and I do have to strip this wall, so. Okay, let's have a go. <laughs> Nothing, not a skerrick, it is just a damp wall. Oh no, hang on, I'm lying, look at that. I would say that's half a poultry layer. I'm throwing in the gloves, I'm throwing in the towel. Chuck's house lovers do not work. There we are house lovers. I'm as sad as you are that our Chuck's experiment didn't bear fruit, but let's cast aside our disappointment and come upstairs because I have been busy as ever this week. And what I have been doing is taking out some of the old built-in cupboards so that our engineer can get a better sense of our chimney breasts. House lovers, you might remember that this was George's wardrobe. And yesterday I took out the framework so that the engineer can see the correct proportion of the chimney breast and also what it does in the roof above. But what I discovered was all this amazing wallpaper stuck in the back. Let's go and have a look. You always hear stories of amazing wallpaper being found in the back of cupboards. Well, this isn't 18th century hand-painted Chinese wallpaper. But what it seems is that Inside this wardrobe, people over the years have essentially pasted it with all the leftover bits of wallpaper from the other parts of the house. You can see here this strip, which looks like it was probably either a border perhaps originally, and it's just been stuck in the middle with other papers to the side. And then up here, this was the top shelf of the wardrobe. And so basically people have cut and pasted remnants of wallpaper to, uh, to line the inside of the cupboard. I'm not sure if you can see here, I'll do a close up, but there is the most amazing sort of aesthetic movement meets Aubrey Beardsley meets very early Art Nouveau wallpaper of stylized poppies, which is just incredible and very sophisticated for this house, which bless it, much as we love Bonacord, wasn't perhaps the most sophisticated of houses. Then there is also this part here, which I think is also part of the repeat of that sort of Aubrey Beardsley paper, which has this lovely woodblock sort of stylized leaf, which is a little bit William Morris. So what this has done is given me some very interesting decorating clues about other wallpapers that we might start looking for um, from other manufacturers that we might use in other places, including house lovers, our bedroom. And so what I was able to do, as you can see yesterday, was to strip off some quite large pieces of the painty wallpaper, which I am going to experiment this week and soak it off and see if I can't separate some of the layers of paper so that we can get a better sense of the repeat of some of these designs and then perhaps scan it and then manipulate it and reproduce it and change the color and then perhaps have it printed on paper or fabric and use it somewhere else in the house again. And I also took the cupboards out in the room next door. So this one and that one that used to be the Colonial Shield door cupboard. And we are going to use those doors somewhere else because they're solid cedar and quite beautiful. But what I also discovered was that the molding and the architraving is also pure cedar. Now in the other cupboards it was all pine frame but this is cedar and if you remember Leslie Lauder was pointing out that in 1874 
when the house was built. Australian cedar had just about been logged out, so it was not being used commonly in interiors anymore. So I feel we're very lucky to have this timber. Now we are going to reuse the mouldings wherever we can, but some of this architraving I'm not sure that we will be using. What I thought I'm going to do is give this to a cabinet maker to make us a series of boxes out of beautiful colonial cedar that was found in the house. The other things that I found, firstly these Victorian iron hooks, and there's quite a few of them in the house, and I have decided that I'm going to clean those. These are original to the house, so 1874, and we will have a little installation of them somewhere where we can hang vital things. And the other thing is the handmade nails. Look at that nail, isn't that so satisfying? And there's quite a few of them. They're just so beautiful and very, I feel, Game of Thronesy. And um, I don't know, is there something we can fashion out of these? I don't know, I'm gonna keep this handful and uh, see if some cunning jeweler can't make something. In terms of available doors then, we have this beautiful long set that belonged in George's room. These are solid pine with beautiful construction. And there are these doors that were the ones that were in the original dining room downstairs, the one with the slate mantelpiece, which you can see behind me there. And Julia's thought is that we're going to do a large built-in cupboard and these could well be the doors for it. Or, which is a great idea, we use these four doors plus the two upstairs from George's room to create panelling in the study. <gasps> It would be painted rather than polished pine, but how fabulous could that be? Come what may, all of these doors are going to be used back in the house. There we are, house lovers. Next week, we are continuing the chimney theme because we have our chimney sweep, Matt, who I have to say is the handsomest, most stylish chimney sweep I have yet seen. So you'll meet him next week. Thank you as ever for watching. Thank you for hitting like and thank you for subscribing. I hope the adventures of renovating Bonacord House are bringing you delight and pleasure wherever you may be. Take care and I will see you next week with our chimney update.